condensation trails growing up my entire life, my father's life. I've talked to grandparents when you know, jet travel first began. Trails always disappear within a minute my entire life. And then suddenly, the late 90s, they began to just hang there, expand, grow. So is the government blocking out the evil radiation from the sun? Or are they engaging in mass inoculations? You know, all these things have been said. Are they poisoning us? Well, we know in the past they have killed American citizens on purpose with admitted biological testing. And then we have all the admissions of low-altitude spraying. Clifford Carnicom, walk through the seven different areas of your research and what you know, what you've tested. What, what you know, Break it down for us, sir. Th thanks, Alex. Um, this list was five up to about a year ago, and there's been two added that I haven't really written up, but uh, I've added to them to the list. Some of these can be shown to exist, uh, at least uh, with the best evidence we can. Some of them exist strictly through analysis. Basically, in my case, I have to look at the data and then ask, what, what would you do? If, if this set of data exists, what does that data um, uh, portend, basically? And so some, I wouldn't call it conjecture by any means, but it's definitely a process of analysis. The seven areas would be as follows. The first would be, and, and I would say that all of these, are, I would call them areas of operation that are consistent with all of the data that has been collected over seven years. They do not exist uh, uh, um, individually. They exist simultaneously. They are. First one would be environmental modification and control, actually modifying. Uh, our world in terms of its bar environment and weather. This would be the simplest and the easiest probably to understand and demonstrate. The, the second would be uh, the conduct of uh, biological operations uh, using uh, particulates as a, a transport medium uh, for biological materials. The third would be uh, the application and use of electromagnetic operations. The, the transmission and propagation and manipulation of energy, electromagnetic energy, uh, within a, a modified uh, atmospheric environment. Uh, let's see, the easiest analogy there would be the ionosphere. Uh, think of the conditions uh, uh, of the ionosphere at altitude, which... Uh, Some type of conductivity for harp or something. Yeah, that's right. That, 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 that medium, think of that medium of the, of the ionosphere being brought to a lower level uh, around the earth basically. We'll, we can talk about each of these in more detail. The, the fourth would be uh, military operations. Uh, defense, military, offensive, defense, military operations. Uh, HARP is certainly a, a main player. If you look at the, at the uh, thesis and patent of the HARP facility, uh, it fits like a glove um, with the actual data that exists for us now. The fifth is a little bit more esoteric, but still um, quite feasible to me. This would be one based on analysis. And that is a geo geophysical um, modification. Actually, the consideration of whether the planet itself, I'm not talking about just the atmosphere, but the, the geophysics of the Earth. Uh, you would be talking about uh, rotation, rotation of the Earth, uh, geophysical processes, tectonics, uh, these type of things. Um, and that may sound um, a little bit stretched for some folks, but uh, the data actually uh, suggests that such things could indeed be fe feasible to do. The last two are additions over the last year, uh, which have not been written up. Uh, number six would be uh, surveillance, uh, a surveillance operation. Um, the idea there being, you know, most of us are familiar with radar, and, and radar is when you send a, a radio wave out and it bounces off of something, comes back, and tells you something's there. Well, what's interesting is radar works because the objects that you're detecting are of a certain size. It has to do with the, the wavelength of what you're sending out. It has to match what it is you're looking for. So radio works with radar for airplanes and big objects. But there is an alternative um, um, method of detection that involves light waves. And the wavelength of light waves is extremely small, very small. And in fact, it, it's at the same size as the particles that we're speaking of that compose this, uh, these operations that are being introduced. So it's quite, quite feasible that you actually uh, could develop a surveillance system that would, instead of being able to track large objects, uh, such as planes and boats and this type of thing, um, could track li literally down to the microscopic level. And uh, this Well, is they, not, uh, I mean, in the public admissions about HARP, they say that it was designed to see tiny objects over the horizon. Exactly true. Um, exactly true. The heart patent is just, it's just full. I've spent some time with that patent, 
and uh, didn't really uh, know a lot about it when I started, but I sort of dug into that on a technical side, and I'll tell you, the, the overlap is, is just tremendous. Now, that's all, that's all the science on the end of it. Uh, studying this, looking at it, though, you know, just speaking on your opinion, what do you think they're doing? Why? You, well, number one, what is this doing to the atmosphere? What changes have we seen that can then point us towards what their goals may be? Okay. Um, the actual materials that are being identified over and over and over are what you would call ionizing salts. It's a very specific category of, of physics and yet extremely important. Uh, the, the best explanation for what can physically transform the atmosphere in the way that they, they have is through the introduction of ionizable, ionizable metallic salts. Now, what does that mean? Uh, and also of an extremely small size uh, down at the submicron level. Um, is it that similar to the nuclei they use to weather uh, control? You mean for cloud seeding? Yes, yes. Well, I would suspect, you know, if we looked into the cloud seeding, and I could be mistaken, but I suspect the particles that we're dealing with would be a, uh, a magnitude. Those are crystals we're talking about, you know, in a conventional sense. The size of these is so incredibly small. Submicron, a human hair is 60 to 100 microns. Uh, a bacteria are on the order of 10 microns. Uh, what I'm speaking of is on the order of a submicron, most likely. Um, so the, the, the size of what you're talking about is truly a unique, uh, let's say represents a truly unique opportunity for a physical change in okay. terms of how clouds form and this type of thing. Okay, please continue. But uh, this business of ionization appears to be extremely important. The materials that are being found, um, specific ones would be calcium, magnesium, and barium. Uh, my tests have repeatedly shown these. Uh, barium is a tremendous concern here because it is a highly toxic um, element in soluble form. Uh, it's quite on par with arsenic in terms of its toxicity in, uh, in soluble form. And what I'm speaking of would be in soluble form because you're dealing about clouds and moisture. These particular um, uh, um, elements, calcium, barium, and magnesium, with special emphasis upon carrying and calcium and barium, these materials have a really unique property in that if you subject them to the energy that is available in sunlight, both visible light and ultraviolet light, particularly the ultraviolet light portion of the spectrum, basically the energy within sunlight is sufficient to cause these materials to become electrically charged. That's what ionized means. Uh, an ion is an electrically charged material. 